Eric, you need to keep an eye on this if anything goes wrong. Mm-hmm. Okay? Can you do that? Yeah, sure. Cool, because I'll have to look at you while I'm talking in my notes. All right. Listening to Alternating with Eric, episode 23. Uh, Eric, how are you? I'm doing quite well. I had a pretty uh, generic week. Uh, work, then rest, then work, then rest. It's a bit of a rinse and repeat cycle, but it's broken up by the fact that I go out training, so that's actually given a bit of stress relief to me. Um, otherwise, nothing else exciting about my life. It's just a matter of really just... Uh, trying to enjoy myself, trying to make sure that I'm well distracted from uh, whatever mundane things I'm doing. So mm. other than that, I've just mm. been uh, watching random YouTube videos and playing games. So th- there was a... Pl- Sorry, I got distracted. There was a plane going past, and um, I hope that's not picking up on the uh, recording. Yeah, that's it- actually a very rare occurrence, so yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised it actually happened. It hasn't so, happened since if, I started If it does here. pick up, I, I apologize. Um, we are... I've decided because I wanted to do sort of a more face-to-face thing of Eric. So uh, we are... We were going to do this on film. Uh, but we don't have a camera with us at the moment. Um, so we are just doing the audio and we are recording from Eric's house. So, yay! yeah, <laughs> so we're doing an in-person, uh, interview versus me recording in a small closet and Eric just recording at his house. So mm-hmm. might sound a bit more boomy, 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 a bit more oh, reverberating. <laughs> <laughs> You bet your tongue I'll add some reverb and post. I'll make it sound good. You almost bit your tongue doing that, didn't you? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I did. Uh, so yeah, I haven't, I haven't been up to too much. Um, I'll tell you, it's it's great doing this person to person because I can actually <laughs> just. Well, it, you might have noticed uh, a bit of a different and difference in the the way I'm like in terms of how close I am to the mic and stuff because now, uh, last time when I did this, I had to have my computer on my lap. And looking at Eric down from below. And now I can literally look directly at him. So I can talk directly into the microphone, which is uh, pretty good. Um, but don't get used to this. <laughs> this won't be our typical. Uh, uh, yeah. But um, this will be this will be for one episode. But uh, I've been very, yeah, a lot of, lot of stuff has came up with work and family stuff. And it's just been a very hectic week. So... I have gotten through some of the show and not through some of the show. I'm still playing through Persona, a lot of it. Uh, just grinding, grinding, and more <laughs> grinding. <laughs> so I've been doing a lot of that shit. Um, and then what What else? Uh, I guess looking for more titles for us to review in the, in the future. Uh, we, we're going to have a special guest at one point on, I guess I... He'll be listening, so he'll know about this. Uh, we have a special friend of ours who's into a lot of Korean stuff, so we're gonna do a special uh, Korean like animation slash uh, manga episode, which he will be featured on. Uh, not yet, though, because Eric told me this week. Um, so we've got a big announcement. Eric brought this up to me. I completely fucking forgot about this, uh, but. Eric was on our first ever episode uh, about my convention experience because when I started this podcast, I called it, I think, Alternating Sloth Podcast, and it was mostly just a uh, alternative podcast to my now defunct um, insert cast, and I basically just um, talked about whatever, and it was just an alternative to the other podcast. It could be more relaxed. Uh, obviously, this has turned more into a review thing now with Eric. And um, 
I just realized we the first episode he was on was a sort of casual talk about our experience with the Wellington Convention uh, scene. And mostly, well, just Armageddon. We've both only been to uh, Armageddon Expo in Wellington. And we sort of uh, got to know each other better through there and other friends and stuff. So, Eric brought up to me that the uh, Armageddon is next week, apparently. Am I right? Next week? Uh, hopefully, I've got that right. Um, yeah, it's, but... it's either next week or the week after. It's it's pretty close. So, I'm going to give Eric five minutes to uh, call tech support. <laughs> Yeah, um. even I wouldn't do that. <laughs> um, let's have a look. So yeah, so we uh, we're gonna do a podcast live from there. So I'm just looking at gear or what I'm gonna do from that. Um, I don't really want to record it on my phone, but that might be what happens. Yep. Um, um, so I'm gonna expose at the uh, Sky Stadium for um, August the first, the second. So that's this weekend. Um, I'm definitely going because it's got some pretty, it's got some, it seems to have a good show cast coming up. They're going to um, be virtual guests, as we know, uh, John, John Barrymore yeah. and people like that, so. Yeah, it's got, yeah, it's already, I'm um, looking at a website, they've already got some rules set up for, um, you know, in case of COVID-19, uh, but it looks like, yeah, it is, it looks like there's a lot of stores up there, there's... Yeah, it hmm. just looks like I'm gonna have to look a bit more into this because um, yeah, the events w- the events would definitely have changed around due to yeah, COVID. Yeah, so, so we we might bring a camera down and we might do some recording with that as well. Um, if we do have a camera, I the camera I have uh, has a really good microphone on it, so we might just use that microphone and do it that way. Um, if that's not the case, I'll bring some recording gear. Uh, depend, yeah, depending on what we decide to do with it, it could be audio based only, or it could be, could be video. Um, I'd like to do video cause that way Eric can maybe interview some cosplayers or something <laughs> and talk about that. He isn't going to be in cosplay this year, but he could interview some people and he's got some experience in that. So he can, he can talk a little bit about that sort of, uh, that sort of thing. Um, and I'd like to interview some guests, but I don't know if we're going to be able to actually, because they're going to not be in person there, and there's going to be some different roles in terms of um, how they're going to be there and that sort of thing. It's going to be weird because it's almost going to be like watching a lot. I don't, I don't know, actually know how they're going to do it. Um, I don't know, but I definitely want to see if I can talk to jo- John Barrowman, yeah, and maybe Carlos Velidis or Daniel Danielle Panabaker. Probably okay. butchering the names. They're the um, they play Cisco and I forgot her other name. And oh, whoops, sorry. It's only oh, this... Carlos Valadez is gonna be at the Wellington one. So he's the one who plays Cisco in the yeah, Flash, yeah, Flash. Um, TV series. Yeah. It would be pretty cool to at least talk to him because mm-hmm. I enjoyed it somewhat. Um, Troy Baker is gonna be at Wellington as well. Um, and Christopher Sabat as well. Yeah. So. I'm pretty sure you know these names more than I do, so you're probably um, already going gaga Everybody on the knows inside. Troy Baker. Yeah, but you're going you're going the most gaga on the inside uh, about this. Yeah, it depends. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's gonna be and uh, yeah, we're we're gonna look into that because there's gonna be some some things with that. But Eric brought that up to me, and so we probably won't do a review next week. <laughs> we'll probably do a review of the convention. We'll actually go to it. Um, and we'll, we'll tell you what we think uh, live from it. And I've just found quite a few fun events. What is it? Um, they're going to have archer and axe throwing. I want to have a go. Uh, chili eating challenge. I want to do that. And what else? A FIFA competition. Well, I'm going to skip that out. I suck at FIFA, sadly. Um, yeah, it looks like a lot of fun uh, stuff happening in Wellington. bloody eating contest. Huh? Chili eating contest. <laughs> it's... um. I know, I know, but they always, that was, yeah. True, but it's uh, technically better than, what was it? Actually, there's almost been no eating contests. And the sad part mind, is... but you, I would like if they had more fan-run panels on actual yeah. geeky things. Because I feel like it's become less of a geeky convention over the years. Yeah, it was actually also more fun when they had the more um, 
uh, a bit more interactive events like the pillow fights at yeah. the end. I mean, because... do, do you remember when they had like the, the actual anime quizzes and things like that? That was yes, they did. That was nuts. People and they going, did, yeah, they did other geek quiz things like that too. And I feel like that should be there way more than some other stuff. That's mm. there. Yes, and wow, I'm actually looking at a bit of the details of the chili eating um chili eating contest. So there's twelve rounds, and each one is a different chili. So apparently, um, they even have a each chili has its own heat rating in terms of Scoville chill <laughs> heat units. So we could record you live burning your <laughs> throat out, burning my throat out. I am Come record rather you and you're curious. Like, oh, God, I can't. I am rather curious because I'm pretty sure I've managed to survive uh, a jalapeno, which is 3,000. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure I managed to su I'm not sure if I man could survive the bird's eye, which is about 100,000. We've got tea, by the way. That's what I'm pouring on. Yeah. Um, so these are the approximate um, heat, heat levels. So this is going to be interesting. And what else? Oh, there's a lot of rules, most of which is we do not take responsibility for whatever happens to you while eating these chilies. But yeah. Well, I mean, so, <laughs> no, 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 no problems there. We kind of want to eat the chili and kill ourselves. Yeah. This should work out. Yeah. So, Eric, what have, what have you been watching slash uh, gaming this week? Oh, Obviously, I've, I've been personering and um, I have watching this show. I have slowly been watching uh, Bungo Straight Dogs because I really like the show. Mm -hmm. I've almost managed to finish the first season. Um, I'm just taking my time with it. I have been reading more of the um, a House Husband uh, manga series oh, that we really? reviewed last time. Oh, yes, oh. because I am what I'm really we curious about. We could have had about. a catch-up this week. We could have had that, that old follow-up segment we had for a bit. <laughs> uh, maybe, but I can't say I was really in. Oh, okay. I was, um, you know completely into it it's mostly a casual thing i'm doing mm -hmm. um the reason i was reading into it is because i was really curious to see how the wife was involved previously because mm. um obviously we know she's now the wife of a former yakuza member mm -hmm. but it's like how how did this happen how did this how did this go mm -hmm. and i've also managed to find uh a manga of the of gto great teacher onizuka oh is that um, the paradise lost one no, there's one called Paradise Lost that's like after years. That's pretty good. No, no, no. This is the original series. Oh, this is basically okay. when he um when he enters into the school and teaches all the kids. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, which looks good so mm. far, but considering that it's old, it's just it does bring a bit of a nostalgic feel yeah. to it. <laughs> it's not that um, old. It's like ninety nine, I think. Well, the anime is. So um, it's... maybe the manga is a bit older. Yeah. Uh, but in any case, that's um, mm. been my anime manga watching and looking at. Yeah. I've kind of foregone uh, looking through isekai, isekai stuff, um, mostly because it's I repetitive am repetitive and the same thing. And more or more. less, there are, I do kind of change it up a few times. There is one isekai where as uh, a young girl who was um, disintegrated. Slime. No, 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 <laughs> not that one. It was a young. It was a young girl who was. Uh, it was a manga about a young girl who was disintegrated along with her classmates okay and ended up uh re reincarnated, um, reincarnated as a spider ah. so what this actually so the rules and logic of this manga series follow almost close to re monster mm. but where re monster has a main character who's so overpowered that basically he can just you know take anyone down wait what is re monster i can't so remember. re monster is another isekai but um <laughs> it's another one it's not a favorite one i recommend i thought it was like one of those monster harem things or something monster girl harem it is in a way it so is, is in a way a monster girl harem thing like is so this a no it's not, it's not a mon spider boy or it's whatever? not a monster girl musume no it's not <laughs> it, it has some elements but it's not the same thing um but with the isekai um spider girl uh manga okay. it was really enjoyable because unlike re monster this she actually struggles a lot mm -hmm. so she has to go up against our uh, monsters way bigger and way stronger than her mm -hmm. and even though she per perseveres in some of them the odds are stacked against her so much that it's really just making things worse for her mm -hmm. and what's another one i looked at there was another one as well where there's a um a young where this a uh, young young man a girl he was helping out and these bullies were all reincarnated into a another world mm -hmm. this follows almost the same premise as a uh, shield hero so oh, yeah. essentially you know he you know a main character comes in the kingdom there screws him over and then 
He leaves him for dead. Um, in this series, though, uh, there's no, it's no, there's no reason except for the fact that the main character is just weak. Okay, so they never figure that he could have a deus ex machina that could mm. potentially help them, and instead just drag him out, throw him into a pit, and hope he dies. But as it turns out, he has a special ability to essentially gain skills, abilities, and levels from any sort of monster that's died. Mm -hmm. So corpse reanimation. He absorbs corpses, he gains their powers and skills and abilities, and he becomes stronger that way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As attested to the fact that he somehow managed to find a rotting corpse of a dragon, and then there we go. <laughs> okay, so already that is a ridiculous thing to see in the uh, first chapter. Yeah. But I was curious because it is a new th it is a new thing that I came across. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably been done to death before, but yeah. it's new it's new to me. But um in terms of, yeah, a lot of isekai stuff, mm. I just kind of stalled on it because I want to try and catch mm. up to mm -hmm. some of the anime and mangas we've looked at previously. Because in all honesty, I have just stopped doing that for a bit, um, but I would really like to yeah. go back to it. So this yeah. is why I started just the simple part, you know, yeah. uh, GTO and yeah. The House Husband. Because... Well they're Eric, both enjoyable. Eric picked this week's uh, show and and um, or manga. I I um, helped him with this pick, but he picked the theme mm. for this week, uh, which is going to be sort of priests and demon hunters. Um, yeah, so yeah, he picked he picked. So it's it's good for you to to keep up with with some shows and mm. see if you could find some stuff for yeah. us to review, which I occasionally do. Um, I'm watching a couple. Well, I'm sort of, I've, I'm trying to get back into watching it. Um, I watched a bunch of a show called uh, Great Pretender, which is a thing on Netflix. It's actually pretty good. Um, it's like thieves and scam artists and stuff. And uh, I don't want to spoil too much, but the first arc, like I watched it and I almost thought like the, I thought like, oh, this guy, he should he should really get out of this business because he kind of does like on the first arc. Mm. And then you're like, well, he shouldn't really come back. And then he comes back mm. and it's like, it's funny, but it's like, oh, this is repetitive. And now you've completely like defeated yeah. all the purpose of all that other stuff you built up. And the new arc is not bad. I found other stuff to like in it, but it did piss me off a little bit at first. Is it kind um, of like, um, King of uh, King of Bands Jing in a way, or is it more? No, 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 no. Uh, so, so more scam artist than than thief. Uh, um, so it's more like um liar than yeah, yeah, more else. more tricking and stuff. Yeah, um, it just feels like kind of mean in some parts of the show, uh, which I didn't quite like. But there's there's other elements I like of it. Um, the backgrounds for some reason are just like really not detailed. They're like really kind of I don't know. They're going like for a, a, a certain thing with it that's kind of low mm. rent um which some people like some people don't i like like the character designs but um i do kind of like there's times where i wish the backgrounds are more detailed but at the same time i can see what they're going for it's got kind of a lupin feel to it a little bit at times uh especially with like the opening <laughs> and some of the um which has got like kind of a it's kind of animated like the if anyone's seen catch me if you can it's kind of got like an animation sequence but like that Wow. Uh, yeah, it's a good movie. People should check that out. Oh, I've already watched. I'll watch Catch Me If You Can. But you remember the little <laughs> opening sequence, like the animated yeah, one? Yeah, yeah. It's a bit like that, um, but it's got kind of like Lupin sort of jazz music on top. Mm. But um, no, the first half's good. The second half, like, it took me a while to get into it, but it's it's pretty good. They're like little missions each part um, going through. So I watched that. I listened, what have been last week? The Maybe a couple of weeks ago. Um, AWO Anime World Order came out with their review of uh, Banana Fish, so I went back and watched a couple oh. episodes of that. It's not a bad show. It's is a, that the one? Is that the one where it's um? Wait, did you say Banana Fish? Yeah, Banana Fish. Actually, no, I've never. Oh, I thought you were thinking um, it's Banana a Cat. BL. Um, it's it's like a BL. Uh, what is it like? Crime crime family thing. Oh. And um, it's not bad. It's 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 a good show. Uh, there were parts of it where I lost, like, I remember when I watched it, there were parts of it where I just lost interest and I don't remember exactly why. Maybe we'll, yeah, maybe I'll watch a bit more and then I'll give you <laughs> some more thoughts on it again. But, um, so I went back and like rewatched the first two episodes of that. And then, yeah, I've been still watching Doom Patrol, watching Arrow still. Uh, he's... <laughs> 
It's what getting, season are you up to? Still on season one. Season ah, oh, yep. There are good things and bad things about it. Mm-hmm. Finally, John fucking Barrowman's on the show now. Um, he's not really doing anything, but I know he's probably going to do something later. John uh, Bar- John Barrowman is um the is subtle is supposed to be the subtle villain. So we would think that the subtle villain would be um Arrow's mom. Mm. You know, uh, all don't of us- spoil it for me. I'm not that far into it. <laughs> oh, okay, then um, does he do some shit? Like, does he fight or does well, he John like, Barrowman send some people to kill some people? Like, is he? Yeah, John Barrowman becomes the true villain. Oh, that's um, good. But the subtlety, but they're going for that subtlety and, you know, trying to veer away from the fact that he's the main villain yeah. to the mother being the main villain. The, but technically, he's the, the main villain. The only thing I will say is I was watching the show and they introduced... Are you playing a game while we're talking? No, of course not. Okay, good. <laughs> he was on his phone and I was like, <laughs> I hope he's not fucking playing, I don't know, Worm or something. No. Um, or Snake or whatever it is. <laughs> but uh, no, um, I've been, yeah, I've been watching it and I've been... they. They introduce uh, John Barrymore's son or something, and he's mm. he's just I don't like him because it's all the it's all the tweeny like he is supposed to be OC the drama of of the CW that kind of is the reason I don't always like their shows sometimes. I think he's just kind of supposed to be that character who's best friends with the main character, but the he doesn't seem to have changed um, from the time the he was with Oliver because when yeah. he when he was in, with Oliver they used to do some crazy mm. shit and then now that he's um you know Oliver's changed he's I guess finding it hard to adjust to mm. you know who Oliver is now well they've given him the, the, since they made him John Barrymore's son that at least gives him something and mm. maybe they'll do something more of him in these newer seasons that are coming out um and you know I don't really like uh lo- I like the guy who's playing the cop, the the cop dad mm. of um the girl that's yeah yeah. I'm pretty sure is gonna be Black Canary. I don't think that's a spoiler. Is she Black Canary? I'm pretty sure she's Black Canary. Yeah, she's Black Canary. I'm yeah. a little disappointed with my Black Canaries, if I'm being honest. Um, yeah, she is. Um, she's a bit of a disappointment. I got spoiled that she was the Black Canary yeah. in uh, the Flash. Um, ep- in the Flash oh, season, because okay. you're supposed to apparently watch Arrow, Flash, Supergirl <laughs> to make sure you don't have anything okay. spoiled. Yeah. But then I watched. Started watching the Flash. Well, I saw realizing. Arrow the first time in the Flash crossovers. So well, yeah, I, I didn't uh, Flash first. Well, yeah, I watched Flash first, and then it spoiled some of the things in Arrow for me. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, I wasn't yeah. supposed to know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sucks. So, well, I, I kind of just, I've read the comics, so I kind of, and oh. I like Black Canary as a character and her design and stuff. Um, I was really, I was really more curious about how she, um, you know, how she was in, uh, in the Injustice comics, because... In the yeah. in the Justice comics, she's she... not too different. But the fact that um she's now stuck in a world where most of the superheroes mm. are dead or on Superman's side. I can't remember if she is... was in Injustice. She that... was. She's in the games, but I don't know if she's she... in the actual comics. Ah, uh, she should be. There I is... think they did add. There were there were the co- there games. were the com- there were the comics for pre, um you know the pre cross crossover yeah. from the because uh, I read the... the first Injustice comic. Before before it got made into yeah. the game. Oh, but the um sorry, the Injustice comics I am talking about are the prequels. So basically how the story leading up from when Superman were you know, these made so, after or before the game? I think these were made after the game. See that, I think the I think these were made in conjunction yeah, conjunction with, with Injustice Two. That, that's, because it, Injustice Two explained what happened yeah. after Superman basically killed the Joker yeah. and explaining pre okay. the pre um the pre injustice one events because yeah i i read the first um injustice comic before it was made into a game mm. and um there there are some differences uh for one you actually see joker getting like his uh you get to see superman put his hand through joker and kill him versus in the in the game you just see it sort of off screen um, yeah, the um the comics definitely made a gory scene of it, and I liked it. Yeah, yeah, I don't absolutely love the art. The art isn't like I don't know. Some of the DC art isn't always great. Sometimes it depends on who's doing it. I reckon they did a pretty good job of making that scene yeah. of Superman punching through um the. Joker. Oh, that's a good image, but some of the other images, like some of the character designs, <laughs> I just don't like as much. But um yeah, that the Black Canary in the Arrow, I'm a little bit uh, on. 
I don't really... I, I'm kind of upset that they decided to make it Black Canary's, like, daughter. That's pretty... I'm pretty sure that's what they did, eh? Mm. If I'm correct. Because uh, it's Di... Black... I can't remember how to pronounce her name. If it's Diana Black... or Diana or something. It's D I uh, Diana. Diana is... No, no, no. It, it's because the first Black Canary is D-I-A-H. I can't remember how to pronounce that. I think that's Diana or something. Dia. Dia or something. Diane. But she's the first Black Canary. And I was kind of upset that they basically said, we're not doing that, Black Canary. And instead, Oliver Queen's going to be with his her daughters, okay? <laughs> That's kind of weird. It would make more sense for Speedy or the other, like, junior um, division of Arrow to be with... But whatever. That's, you know, they're, they're, they're doing their own thing. Um, but that, 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 you know, just as a comic book fan, I was like, oh. They, hmm. Why are they doing that? That that doesn't that almost <laughs> doesn't make sense. Like they could literally just call Separa- this separate that. separate the characters. But I know they've got two black canaries as well, which is in the comics. So I guess that makes sense. But I am really far behind. I, the story I like my I like my my main black canary, which is I, <laughs> Jesus. I I can't pronounce her last name because I never I never like I don't know when, when I've read the yeah. I, I, I never think about how it's meant to be pronounced. <laughs> when I've seen the TV show, I think they just call her Black Canary a couple of times or they offhandedly say her name. Um, mm. But yeah, I've generally liked her look in the comics. I've liked her relationship with uh, with the Green Arrow. Um, the Green Arrow. Green Arrow. And uh, yeah, and they've introduced Huntress in this, in this show and I like um, Huntress. Huntress is not too bad. Um, she kind of just reminds me of Electra when I'm watching the show. Where are you up to exactly on the Huntress? I'm up to. I'm sure she's gonna get killed off. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> just, just ex- tell me where you up to. I'm up to the part where um, they've like hooked up. They're in like a relationship now, and they're working together. And Eric is like groaning right now because he knows something I don't. I've read the comics, so I know what happens to like if they if they're following some of the comics. Like I know Speedy before they even fucking introduced her, I was like, Oh, she's gonna have like if a drug read all she's the, gonna have a drug problem because she does in the comics. And if you big... read all the comics, then I'm sure what's gonna happen next won't surprise you. Yeah. But I will tell you she does show up a bit later. So mm-hmm. um yeah. She does show up a bit later, yeah. so there's that. But I won't make the big spoiler. I will say that. it would be... Do you think they're going to ever introduce Green Lantern into the CW DC universe? Because uh, Green have, Lantern is really good friends with Oliver Queen. So they haven't really done. done so, so far, as far as I remember. Yeah. I don't think they'll do that. I think they're going to keep to the... I think they're just going to keep uh, the characters like Arrow, Flash, Superman, Supergirl... Mm-hmm. Um, who else is there? Well, and also Black Ke- Lightning, I think, has also crossed over a couple times. But that's um I think that, that would mostly be in uh Legends of Tomorrow, which yeah. does have Firestorm and uh I actually forgot what the rest of the characters Killer are. Killer Frost. Like yeah, Killer Frost. Um Yeah, there's a whole lot of uh Yeah, they're, they're sort of, of establishing their own thing. Mm-hmm. I will say I do get um I'm not minding the show, but kind of like in the comics, they've really kind of made Green Arrow just kind of Batman in a couple times. <laughs> I know even later on, they just basically give him like some of the same villains. Um, I haven't got up to the part with, with Slade, but it was, we talked last week, I didn't like his accent. And so I really like, voice. I really liked Slade, but the I don't Batman know. voice and the accent was a bit mm. weird when I watched it. But the other thing too is I'm, I'm really happy that Titans finally fucking made him a villain in that show in a live action form because i don't really like him as a batman anyone else's villain because he's such a good villain for robin they have made him they have made him a villain in the original teen titans uh tv show yeah but um, you know if if you know the history of um deathstroke you know that his first appearance was in teen titans mm-hmm. he's he's robin's main villain he's his uh Ra's al ghul as you know yeah. that's his main villain so I was kind of pissed that, uh, well, I was pissed of two things. I was pissed that one, he, Robin got his villain basically stolen from him and Arrow had him first. And then also, he also had Rayshard Ghoul as a villain at one point, which is a Batman villain. 
And I get that these villains sometimes like go around like Batman's had a couple of Superman's villains and, and Flash's villains and that sort of thing. But um, I do wish sometimes they would with like in terms of main villains, you know, um, it's fine I think for side villains, but I just get pissed when it's like their main villain for that show mm. that they introduce is not the their, especially when I know they have actual main villains they could bring out. Like, I am happy that John Barrymore is the villain for season one because he's an actual character from the the comics. He's um, Merlin. He's the, you know, he's the he's one of um, Arrow's main villains. Yeah. Like, I was, I was kind of happy with Flash that they didn't they didn't go like, okay, uh, we're doing a Flash TV show. Let's grab one of Batman's villains and let's make him the main villain for Flash first season. Mm-hmm. No, they made the smart decision and said, we're going to do reverse Flash. The dumb thing they made, though, is they did kind of... I don't know. I haven't read the comics in a while, but they did get a bit... um, The TV series, like, I stopped watching Flash because the first season wasn't bad, and then the second season felt like the exact same thing, but written in a different way in terms of the villain. The Because it was literally a... It was Zoom... And Zoom was literally like the same twist with the same sort of character. The thing, the thing with the first three seasons is that they all seem to be written almost the same way. Yeah. Um, first season, Reverse Flash introduces the familiar villain to the Flash. You know, yeah. someone who is like the Flash but the complete opposite of him. Yeah. Then and the a second big twist. Yeah. A little with a with a good twist in and the then end. Someone gets killed, and then it, someone gets resolved, and that's usually every single fucking season. The, those are the first three seasons. Yeah, I haven't looked at season. Seasons. I haven't finished watching season four, but I know it's completely different. There is no um speeds the villain. There is no you know completely big surprise. Um, the Flash is well aware of who the villain is from the very beginning mm-hmm. uh, and he is trying to resolve the situation that he technically himself yeah. created which i know appears to be as um similar to every other <laughs> to every other season but this one is somewhat different mm. um but yeah it's a bit of a it was a bit of a strange formula to watch for you know the rep- repetition mm. the only difference being was you know what is the twist like yeah. is it that obvious Someone pointed out at some point that it was that obvious because it felt fucking the, obvious to me. Yeah, because I, I just got pissed at season two. I yeah. kind of stopped on season two because yeah. I just felt like it was wasting my yeah. time. It was because one because one person mentioned that the twists kind of follow the pattern of the person closest to the main character. Yeah. So first season is you know is it gonna be it's gonna be your teacher? Then it's second season your friend. Yeah. Now third season it's yourself. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. I just think they could do something out like the, I wish they had done something else in, in season three, like made someone else a big villain in season two or something instead yeah, of Yeah, because for... one thing I don't remember is is Doom and Salva uh Salvatore or oh, I can't remember the main villain of the yeah, first season. No, was, are those two that. villains actually in the comics? Are they yeah. Flashes are they flashes uh I, I think I think um oh no that's not a flash. I was gonna say Vandal Savage, but I don't think he's Flash. Vandal Savage exists, but he's a DC but he's a sorry, Justice League villain. Yeah, no, I, I think and he's, he's originally not a, though someone like the Flash or someone like Green Arrow, but I can't remember who. Uh oh yeah. Uh yeah, because Vandal Savage in the in one of the in the in the cartoon series, he was he was the guy who was manipulating yeah. the world and the did, Justice League. You watched, to, by the way, did you did you watch Young Justice when it was out? Uh, a little bit, yeah. yeah. Only only like that the was, first and second oh, season. You've got to you've got to watch the the third season, and mm. they're all good. They're all good. And that's I, that's I, Young I like Justice them. Outsiders, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I love them because they they've taken. It's funny. I don't actually like that. I've tried watching the Justice League T the cartoon show, the Number, old version. Yeah, the one that came right after Batman the animated series. The one that had Batman and Wonder Woman having some kind of relationship. Yeah, a little bit. I actually like that. I I tried watching that show multiple times, and there are episodes I like. There are things I like about it, but I find myself not getting into it as much. And I think it's because I like DC. I like some of the stuff they did. But I do think I like some of their younger characters a bit more. Mm. It might just be because I also grew up with their younger characters first. Because their their older like Justice League stories just always seem a bit too fantasy based. They're or, or science fiction, and mm. that's not really like they get a bit Star Trekky and you know, things like that, which is not really for me. Um, and I love Wonder Woman. I like Green Lantern. 
I don't really like Superman. Um, but there are a couple writers here or there who can do good, like Alan Moore. If he ever gets Superman, he does a great job of it. The best episode of Justice League is the episode that mm. they they took from an Alan Moore story. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't mind their version. I just I'm watching Young Justice, and it's I like it because it's um, it's all the characters I like with some characters I think I wouldn't like, but they made me like like I like Superboy. Because he's like Superman, but I don't have all the same complaints that I have with Superman. Like, he's not overly powered. He's half Kryptonian. So he's like, he's got the powers, but he's also got weaknesses too, even more than Superman. And he, I don't know, like, he has all these internal struggles and other things that just, I find him more interesting as a character. And then he's got a really interesting relationship with uh, Miss Martian. So, you know, and then he's got, he's got Nolan North doing a great job voicing him as well. So that helps too. So, yeah, I, I just really enjoy um, that version. And I guess because, like, I read the Teen Titans, I read a couple of their younger issues. I didn't read as much Justice League. Mm. Some of that some of that I like, some of it I don't. Um, yeah, I remember I remember before finding out that the entire um, DC universe decided to rehash everything, I used to read a lot of the pre-New 52 stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I never... I stopped at it a bit at some point and then realized that when I went back to reading it, I thought, oh, this seems a bit different. Like everything I read was different from what I remembered. And then I went online and realized the stuff I was reading was the New 52 stuff <laughs> and everything was rehashed, you know? Yeah. It was, um, I think one of the biggest things I realized about it was the change in character to Raven. Yeah. You know, Raven looked weirder now than she was before. Like before it was simple. Mm. Now it's like, you look like a chicken. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but I mean, it wasn't. Well, the some, Teen some, Titans I've read is pre fifty two. I've yeah. read their original Marv Wolfman. Yeah, yeah, run, exactly. Which was eighties, and Raven and everybody looked different in that. But yeah. a lot of the things that are established in that, you saw the TV show. You saw it's the same, almost the same sort of team. There's some differences. Um, and Cyborg, man, there is some. There is like. The, the best version of Cyborg I have seen in live action is still Doom Patrol. I still stand by that. Mm. The fucking movie that they did with Cyborg, that was trying to... I think they were trying to go for New 52 with that. And oh, I you just, mean the Justice League movie? Yeah, the Justice League movie. And I just didn't like that version because mm. it was just such a fucking emo downer. And there was none of that happiness... And there's so many good. I think I think the um I think the first um I'm pretty sure the first movie or maybe it was the first episode of, uh the Justice League yeah. where, um on the cartoons was good, because yeah. it not only kind of introduced the origin story to all the characters, yeah. and even a better origin well, they had story. Already established Superman and Batman from they did, TV but shows. in this one they actually made a good establishment of Cyborg's story. Um, so wait, they managed wait, oh, to... you're talking about the Justice League Doom movie, eh? That yeah, that's the, one, that's, that's the one. That's the one. The Justice League Doom movie. That's different. Yeah, that's the that's yeah. the movie. Yeah, that's I definitely that definitely did a good job of introducing the characters and introducing a better villain than Steppenwolf. I think. Well, he's in Justice League Outsiders as well, Cyborg, and they did a mm. really good job with him in that too. Um, he he can be a really good character. Like he's got some great. He is very in the '80s uh, when they wrote him. He's got like very. 80s mm-hmm. you know type yeah, is, yeah 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 it is very much in its time period both with the way it looks and the way it sounds same way that spider-man is very like daddy-o and all that sort of thing with mm-hmm. the dialogue um teen titans is like that as well and but there's like there's storylines in there and there's tragedy and stuff in there um some of it's being added to the new 52 some of it hasn't like there's a really great story with uh cyborg and his dad where he, I think he knows his dad's like dying or is going to die. And so there's just a page, it's really like moving, of just him and his dad just like hanging out and doing things and just like playing basketball, just hanging out, just, you know. And it's just like, I think it's two pages or something like that, just of them doing stuff. And then the final page is like him on his deathbed and Cyborg is just there with him. And this is after all like the stuff that we kind of already see now, which is like, we see all the like stuff of him being angry of his dad, his dad like trying to fix him, give him the robot suit. We see all of that stuff, but we don't see any of like the revelation to that. Um, we don't see like the relationship between uh, Raven and Starfire. Sometimes we do, but not as much as like in the comics. 
So some of that stuff I'd like to see like a little bit more, if I'm being honest. Like some of the new Fifty Two stuff I wasn't too happy with. Some mm. of it I was. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, this has turned into DC Comics podcast <laughs> for 20 minutes. Uh, you can tell I definitely like DC Comics. Mm. Uh, so we're going to take a quick 10-minute break, and then we'll, we'll get into some anime. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. are back from the break and we are going to get into the anime review for this week we are reviewing uh vatican miracle examiner okay so eric can you just tell us briefly the plot of uh this show the show which is vatican miracle examiner is essentially is it looks like it looks like a show which is about uh, members of the Vatican Church who are investigating what people would think to be miracles across the world, um, stuff that stuff that people would consider to be out of the ordinary or a divine sign from God, mm-hmm. something that um, the Church wants to investigate to see whether or not it's real mm-hmm. or fake. Yeah. Of course, if it's real, this is something they'd like to preserve, to look into more, to uh, basically add to their own arc- mm-hmm. secret archives mm-hmm. of whatever else they keep down there, uh, referencing, uh, you know, Dan Brown's uh, good books. Uh, obvious, but obviously, from what I can tell of the first few episodes, uh, if it's not a miracle, though, it, it, it goes against the word well, of God. We'll, we'll get into that. Yeah. We'll get into that. Yeah. Um, if it's not a miracle, they just This show, and the first episode, and I stopped watching this because I thought this was almost propaganda a little bit when I was watching the... It is very, like... It, it's weirdly pro Christian and very like, mm. and it's not bad. I don't mind that, but I was just taken a bit back because anime is usually like, uh, priests especially are either like weirdly violent, uh, good guys <laughs> with like guns, you know, they're like Helsing type, um, assassins or something. Or in Soul Leader, there was like a guy with like headphones that did like shooting who was a priest. Um, or you've got, you know, Alexander Anderson, who's got like the bloody, uh, knives and shit, who's like basically almost like a Terminator type sort of thing. And then you've got like, uh, you know, the exact opposite where you've got like priests that are vampires and like, you know, things like Trinity Blood and, uh, other shows like that, or just straight up bad priests who are just like monsters or demons or murderers, or in some case they're like, you know, um, but sadly some real priests are like in real life, not all priests, but some priests, you know, where they're criminals or, you know, um, sexual deviants and things like that. But this show is pretty like pro Christianity and it gets a lot of things right. And it takes almost like a very Western approach to priests in some mm-hmm. ways. Um, like the character designs and like the way it's like voiced and things like that are obviously it's very Japanese in that one, the music, um, the opening and stuff, but like the, the feel of it, um, like the first two episodes, at least to me, like it felt very like, like it, it felt like the person had done its research and, you know, likes Chris, you know, likes that sort of stuff and, uh, made sure like the characters are actually like, they're not questioning their beliefs. They're very much like they Mm -hmm. are Christians and that's their faith. There is a lot of, there is a lot of, um, I forgot the word, but they do, they do, uh, but they do show just kind of how priests are and how they would yeah. act and how they live. Um, mm-hmm. And also the teaching methods they have and how they yeah. introduce each other. You know, yeah. everyone is known as the father, you know, yeah. father yeah. Uh, this, father that. I can't remember all the names of the characters, <laughs> but essentially everyone is known by as a father. And when everyone seems to be of the same mind, they are all followers of God. They are there as uh, brothers, mm-hmm. as uh, sons mm-hmm. of God. And they're there to follow his faith in his yeah. faith and his belief. So, I wanted to before we get into the show. There's some things I wanted to get into. Um, there's just some things I was going to explain for some of maybe our non-religious viewers or some of our viewers who are maybe not uh, didn't grow up Christian or Catholic. Um, so I grew up in a Catholic church. Uh, I was raised Catholic. Um, Eric, you do you, could you 
We're not going to explain what our faith is now, or what our stance is on faith, just in case we do, you know. We're not going to be, um, we're not going to turn this into like pro-atheist cast or <laughs> um, pro-Christian cast or anything like mm. that. We're just going to talk about our backgrounds and how it relates to the show. So, Eric, do you have any background with Christianity? Or oh, yeah, yeah. Like I grew Church up, or anything? I grew up as um, Russian Orthodox. Um so it's another branch of Christianity. It was introduced to uh, Russia during the pilgrimage, from what I remember, the pilgrimage of Greek Orthodox um, travelers. Um, it, but I'm pretty sure there was a different story to that. Anyway, it was reintroduced and it became a state religion, uh, more or less. Mm-hmm. It's had its ups and it's had its ups and downs, um, but it was the uh, but it was a well respected religion. Now. The one thing, I think the one big difference is kind of how uh, they interpret faith as opposed to how Westerners do it. In mm. Russian Orthodoxy, they are very heavy on faith. It's all belief in, you know, how faith, you know, faith in, not, not really... Um, is it is it kind of like Jewish Orthodox, where it's very, like, it's very serious, it's almost like it's its own community it's like a really big community and a group and you have like it is, traditions yeah. and stuff it is definitely it is definitely closer to that than it is to western westerners is uh i guess west by western christianity i mean closer to what the american version is yeah it's something um yeah is a uh, vastly different to mm. russian orthodoxy um I, I would say that and this is kind of weird to say but i would say that christians and catholics are a little bit different I think there is a slight difference because I do find when I've met Christians, and this isn't a slant on anybody who's Christian or Catholic, we're not judging anybody here, but just I've noticed personally as someone that grew up uh, as a Catholic that there is a difference in between um, just how relaxed the religion is between between both. Um, like we, we're very, I noticed Catholics, like we're very much about our, our faith, um, when we were at church, but I didn't notice as much like when I've interacted with Catholics or met other Catholics, it doesn't seem like it's a major thing outside of that church. But when I've met Christians, it's like a major thing. They're involved in a lot of other groups and other things like that. Catholics, to me at least, it didn't seem like that, which is weird because we do have like, you know, Catholics is all more revolved around obviously the Vatican, which is the holy city in Rome which is the Pope and all that. So we've got like clearly a, an actual, um, you know, it's not just about Jesus and, and the belief of that. It's also like about, you know, the priests and it's, 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 there's more stuff to it. Uh, I would say, um, you know, like Christianity seems to me like the, the, there seems like some very relaxed parts of it when people think about it. But when I've actually talked of like Christians and, be involved with them it seems like they're way more involved in their religion and getting people into their religion than catholics at least that that is to me at least that's what i've seen i might have a completely different perspective having been you know raised in it versus eric here who's <laughs> been raised in a different version of it hmm. you know yeah the versions the versions of um christianity or really the branches to yeah. what can be said the, as the original um beginning of the faith mm. is always confusing mm. to me because I know that you know, even even without including uh, Christianity, other religions have had a mm-hmm. base religion to go from, and then obviously some of these religions have lasted longer than others. Even the first original religion has gone completely. Yeah. You know, no one has I, any faith. I should in it. say as well, just to, since Eric said he's Orthodox, I should probably clarify what you know branch of Christianity I was. Uh, you know, Catholic. I was raised in. So I was raised in Roman Catholic which is kind of funny if people know me because I'm not Roman or Italian at all in the slightest. Um, I, I'm, I'm like, I've got a lot of Irish in me, a lot of Dutch in me, a lot of English in me. Uh, so you'd think I'm Irish Catholic. if you know, You'd think I'd be raised that, but no, I was raised a Roman Catholic mm. uh, because I went to a Roman Catholic primary school. And so, uh, yeah, that's, sorry, Eric, continue with what you were saying. Um, yeah, and, uh, oh, essentially that was just my point. But I guess following up from that, um, I should, I guess I should, um, you know, explain how I, I I guess how I, how I ended up being a Russian Orthodox, because Mm -hmm. when I was born in Uzbekistan, which is not in Russia, Mm -hmm. and my family were all born in Armenia, 
Also not in Russian. <laughs> now, how did I become Russian Orthodox? How did my family decide to be Russian Orthodox? Well, one thing we should um, have realized by now is which countries were part of the Soviet Union, uh, basically, even uh, basically, you know, after the Soviet Union was formed. And Armenia and Uzbekistan were both part of the Soviet Union. So even though the countries were autonomous themselves, they, you know, operated by themselves, they could have their own sort mm -hmm. of form of government, they mm -hmm. could have their own running economy, um, they were still part of Russia, you know, in yeah. a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although even saying they were autonomous was a bit on the nose. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but even then, the state religion introduced was still, um, was still Russian Orthodox in Uzbekistan, which is a funny thing because originally the main religion for Uzbekistan was Islam. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So... You can see a lot of that when you go to Uzbekistan. That's the one thing that's always confused me until I grew up and actually realized. Mm. And uh, one of the main things that would confuse me was when I was visiting some of the uh, temples or the, not temples, mm -hmm. but the buildings, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. in Uzbekistan. These designs, you know, the way the buildings were designed, the way they were structured, the architect, the, um, uh, the way everything structure. looked, the structure mm -hmm. of it all was Islamic design, mm -hmm. not Christian mm -hmm. designs. Yeah. That's what confused me. Yeah. And I was thinking, well, why is that? I think conversion, probably. That would be my... my but, but, but you continue. It's actually less of conversion. Islam became a main state, main religion. Not a state religion of Uzbekistan, but one of the main religions mm -hmm, mm -hmm. due to the fact that it's had a lot of influence in the Silk Road. Yeah. Uh, this is not to be confused with the Chinese Silk Road, which is <coughs> bull. Um, but this <laughs> is the original Silk Road. The Silk Road that ran from the edge of East Asia all the way to Europe and the what we now know as the Middle East, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and this is where this is where it, um, and Uzbekistan was one of the countries that intermixed with all these travelers and merchants, mm -hmm. and a lot of what was um you know mixed between them wasn't just material goods; it was also ideas and religions. And um, you know, at one point, Islam became one of the main religions for Uzbekistan. Mm. And then, of course, once um, Uzbekistan was integrated into the Soviet Union, just like Armenia was, mm -hmm. Russian Orthodox became one of the main religions. Mm. Now, I wasn't born until 1993, mm -hmm. which is a bit funny because, uh, you know, Berlin Wall fell and the <laughs> Soviet Union broke up around yeah. 1991. Yeah. However, due to the, due to the administrative um, uh, responses, it took a while for everything to settle back into its own niche. I, I was, sorry, I also believe that the Soviet Union, I had, I think they had a different head, like they had a different person take over around 1987. 1987, that was Gorbachev. Yeah, yeah. So, they so Gorbachev, a, yeah. Gorbachev was instrumental in kind of making the decision to break up the Soviet yeah. Union and let the Berlin Wall yeah. uh, fall, um, as with the famous words of, I think, JFK. Uh, or Ronald, like that. Ronald Reagan. No, Ronald Reagan thing. or JFK. It was one of them. One of them no, said, no, JFK Gorbachev, John F. Kennedy tear this dead, wall dead by that down. Time. Yeah, that's right. He, was, he died. <laughs> John, John F. Kennedy died in like Oh, I don't know why I thought John F. Kennedy. Five, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Anyway, in the famous words of Ronald Reagan, yeah. Gorbachev, tear this wall yeah. down. Yeah. But in any case, um, I guess, yeah, so once that all that happened, um, even despite all that actually happening, it took a while for... Um, all the countries to go back into their original niche. Mm -hmm. So while that was happening, I was born uh, two years later, and even then, <laughs> a lot of Soviet influence, a lot of Russian influence still mm -hmm. existed. Yeah. So that was prevalent in the fact that I grew up in the Russian Orthodox religion, and all my documents are all are in the original Soviet yeah, design. Yeah, you've still got a passport that's just got a Soviet <laughs> Union thing on it. I do... No, 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 that's not a passport. That's oh. um, My passport was an... Um, was issued, I think, in 2000, maybe 1999. Okay, okay. But it was the Russian passport, as yeah. we would have known it. Um, yeah. But my birth certificate mm. is Soviet Union design. But, but relating this back to, to the Orthodox religion... Mm -hmm. um, Oh, well, I have to really catch myself <laughs> up because, wow, we were going in a completely <laughs> different direction to this. And it was we just, got somewhere really interesting, though. But basically, it was, Eric's, Eric's talked about how, like, the... the um, yeah, the orthodoxy, elements. yeah, Russian orthodoxy existed within the mainland territory when yeah. it was Russia for a long, long time. Mm. And its influence kind of spread out and essentially was um, included into the uh, autonomous mm. states mm. of the Soviet Union. 
um, which is not only the reason why I'm Russian Orthodox, but also why some I think some form of the Russian Orthodoxy still exists there. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, with Russian Orthodoxy, it's also had a bit of a sad history uh, during the uh, October Revolution, where uh, the takeover by the Bolsheviks and Lenin saw that anything traditional, anything mm-hmm. associated with the royal family should be burned and destroyed. That included a majority of what was um, uh, the major- a majority of what was known as the uh, Russian Orthodoxy. So, sorry, was it, this was the this was this the Tsar and all that? Yes, the Tsar. So essentially, so would Rasputin be Russian like Orthodox? Yeah, he's Russian Orthodox. Was he was he like Christian Orthodox? Or yeah, of course, of course. He was a he was a monk. He was a Christian monk. Ah, oh, yes, yeah, yes. As yes. we've um as we as should... we've stated in, in a previous episode, you yeah. can listen to yeah. of uh, Lupin the Third from Russia with love. Check it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Plug, plug. So yeah, so people like Rasputin, uh, Rasputin were were Christian monks. They yep. uh, essentially they they essentially um in in encompassed what was known as mm. you know the traditional mm. Russia mm-hmm. which is something mm. Lenin didn't want mm. and it's something the Bolsheviks didn't want yeah. because obviously when they we, you know when um when they can see they can gain more support by destroying the thing yeah. that made people more yeah. upset then they'll take that opportunity yeah. you know and with the czars and anything yeah. associated with them but we're, you know, gone. we're we're getting we're getting back into some some fascinating history from our mm. previous uh, episode yeah this um, is eric does have a, a degree in this stuff as well if you can't tell so he and he's obviously raised in it so um but yeah point is eric has uh, was raised in it i was raised catholic roman catholic mm. which I is was... interesting because this is a mm-hmm. uh, roman you know church this is obviously mm-hmm. the the vatican yeah so I, I came into this sort of uh, knowing the look of it, knowing the feel of it. Um, kind of like I, I watched The Exorcist with, uh, <laughs> with a friend of mine who was also raised like in a Catholic school. <laughs> and we just looked at each other and we're just like, sort of, we, we just had a look because we're like, oh, we, we know all the, we know all the, like the things they're saying. We know the Our Father they're saying. We know, we know all the rituals and stuff they're doing. <laughs> we never saw an actual exorcism, but we know like, you know, what they do when they go into bless a house and things like that. Um, and I wanted to talk about, mm. we, we talked about, you know, Rasputin and other people and priests and stuff. So I think we should, uh, some things I wanted to get out of the way. I've mentioned some terms already, like I've mentioned what the Vatican is. It's the holy city in Rome. Uh, the Pope is obviously the big, you know, the big cunha, the big chief. You have other people like arch- archbishops and the like who are um, under him. And then you have, you know, your priests and and bishops and so on. Uh, but I, one thing I wanted to uh, get into is, um, so I, I, I did some, some exploring and uh, I read, I read some of my old books and stuff and uh, looked into some of my old Bibles and stuff. And I looked into what the actual priest uniform is and how we can explain it. Because there are two main characters uh, who I'll, I'll name now because we didn't name them. Uh, he, he, uh, Hiraga Joseph Ko and Robert, uh, sorry, is it, yeah, it's Robert, I've, is it, yeah, yeah, Robert Nicholas, uh, both of them wear your typical priest uniforms where it's the black long robe with the little white collar and then, um, I believe they're called, uh, stools, the little things that go over mm. the robes. And um, I've got some some information uh, on here, and I'm going to have to credit a, a priest who I saw online called Patrick uh, Schultz, and he explains that the uniform, the reason it's black is because uh, back in the day, monks would um, wear this color to remind them that they're all going to, and this is kind of grim uh, in a way, but um, it was kind of to remind them that death was a thing and that it was going to come, and that since it is going to come, you are reminding yourself this because your life is dedicated to the church Mm. and you are a symbol for the church. And that is why uh, black is worn. And um, the stool that they wear around their uh, neck, the basically the long scarf-looking thing, um, the reason that is that is worn, that is something that priests put on. They they kiss it before they put on because it is a holy item that you put on, and it's basically the equivalent, in my opinion, of putting a tie on when you put a suit on. It's the thing you put on at the you know after you've put everything else on to say 
this is my symbol that you know once i put this on this is me starting my day of work Mm -hmm. you know once my tie's off that's the end of work it's the same thing with the stool you know the stool you take that off you take off the collar both of those off you know you're off the you're off the clock but once you're on the clock once you're going to work you put both of those on you know you kiss your stool you you go to work basically and that's that's sort of uh what it you know what that means so just thought i would uh, explain that and i've got some other terms here but um we'll get into those when we when we get into it because there are some other uh terms and things that came up when i was watching this um i've got a little history for you guys on um some things in satanism as well that i'm going to get into that are, <laughs> that are touched in on a couple episodes but Yay. this show is uh the show is very yeah this show is very like pro-christian has a lot of like interesting like it's really well researched and it doesn't take the typical sort of route of what we think of of like a priest presented an anime until like episode three i would say uh which i will i will get into and i'm tr- gonna try not to spoil it because eric actually hasn't watched episode three and he's gonna be reading off <laughs> he's um he's read the blurb you no know you didn't three. have to mention that. i'm going to because it's hilarious um to, wow. to, to out <laughs> you like this <laughs> but whatever well, he's he's seen two episodes and they're the main like mm. plot of this episode so i'm gonna get into episode one uh right here uh just give me there we go so the, our main characters are introduced uh and they are investigating a church in germany and i think the first priest we're introduced to is father klaus and he is uh of course german like the rest of the priests and um when they're there there is a young sister uh through episodes uh i believe yeah i think i think this is introduced in episode one as well but it's touched on a bit in episode two as well but um a young sister named anna is bleeding from her palms in the same way that jesus did on the cross and she also <laughs> manages to get pregnant uh somehow without any form of contraception now i have a uh some some stuff on um this but yeah what let, let's just get what, what were your general thoughts before i get into some of the stuff of this honestly it kind of gave me a um gave me an idea that this and this is just the anime version of every show ever made where they try and oust out fake miracles mm-hmm. you know you got your um yeah, you, well, you got, well, you got your, well, you got your faith healers who believe they can heal any kind of wound you've got your um, guys who we're not really given a swindle though they they really yeah. for the first two episodes it's, it's um, really treated like this is an actual holy thing this is a thing taking place and they're going to investigate why um what mm. holy you know form of they're, they're treating it like it's a real spiritual thing and not I treating think, it like it's I th- a scam i think what's included i think yeah i think what's included i think some of the core concepts included there um do make it seem like it but i still believe this seems to be mm just the Vatican priests who are coming there to investigate um, are investigating what could be a potential scheme, you know, a, a potential um, con, a potential con, but it's uh, apparent, but it's apparent that it's also could be a cover up. And even then it's a cover up. That's not known by a lot of people, which is yeah. why they're even known about it's it. It's not really touched upon that. It's a big cover up until episode three and a mm. little bit into episode two uh yeah but my general my general thoughts on this was it was okay yeah um did you like the look of it i think it looks very good it looked it looked okay i think the main attraction would definitely be the scenic shots yeah and the more you know holy imagery yeah they they really seem like they they did their research not only on like the obviously what i talked about with christianity and stuff mm-hmm. but they've clearly done their research on what buildings look like and the german um architecture and stuff as well mm. and uh yeah i think i think that was like it almost in part felt like uh I, you know i talked about the exorcist it felt like a european um horror movie like the omen and things like that and parts just like the tone the music the look um in a couple places that was that was definitely there uh that is episode two though we we basically this stuff happens um and then i'm going to say spoilers spoilers and spoilers 
for this part here. Uh, so Father Klaus gets his head. Uh, I'm just going to keep saying that just to piss off Eric. That's not pissing me off. <laughs> Father Klaus uh, is killed at the end of this episode. He gets his head uh, smashed in. And he is um, smashed in on top of a pentagram. Now, Eric, what do you know about pentagrams? Well, from my just from, generally, just just generally. generally, they are they are viewed by the church as the sign as a sign of evil and okay. as uh, one of the main markers for satanic All rituals. Right. You know. Now, do you know the difference between a pentacle and a pentagram? A pentacle. Yeah. Do you know what a pentacle is? Not exactly. Okay, so uh, I did some Googling and did some research, and some of this is it's books I own and stuff as well. So a pentacle is a pentagram with a circle around it, mm. okay? A pentagram is the star thing. Okay. Now, pentagrams are very similar to... Uh, <laughs> there's, there's, there's a similar history with a pentagram to the swastika, the swastika, people know about that, was a religious sign, and it still is a religious sign, used in Buddhism and some other religions. Hinduism. Yeah, Hinduism as well. It is not a it was not a Nazi symbol originally, and it faces a certain way, if you've seen it, um, that's not facing the same way as the Nazi symbol. Same thing with the pentagram. The pentagram, if it's facing upwards like a regular star, it's actually uh, it's meant to represent five points. It's for the four elements, um, and then I believe Earth or something like that is the, the one on the top. Um, but that's what it originally was supposed to represent, and it was actually used by Christians in churches. Um, you can actually see it in a couple churches, but it is facing upwards. So that means the you know it's it's what we think of like a typical star. Now. Uh, when Satanists were, uh, so let me just, just look for my notes here. Um, so basically what happened was a, um, in history, it was only seen as bad when it was put then into reverse because an ex, uh, priest who was kicked out of the church, a guy who I'm going to pronounce his name pretty wrong here. I believe his name was Aliphas Levi. He, uh, left the church and wrote some books under a, uh, I think this was his pseudonym name, and he um, basically talked about, like, the pentagram being in reverse as being a, a symbol of the devil. And then, uh, basically, this got more popular in the 60s, um, of course, with the famous Satanic Panic. They went through the 60s and 70s <laughs> and all the way into the 80s. Um, yeah. And this sprouted by, uh, this was something I was listening to on another podcast, do you know why there was a big satanic panic and a lot of parents thinking their kids were being brainwashed and things like that? Uh, it, there was a lot of factors do, into it. Do you know it. why this started though around sort of the 50s and 60s? Because the church was trying to invent a new way to <laughs> No, get it's not actually to, to do with the faith. church. It's not actually to do with the church. Is it because do you know parents, why parents... Because parents thought that by kids playing video games or being involved in stuff that they don't understand, they were involving themselves with a far more you could, evil You force. could think of it like that. But the main reason, and I was listening... So I am stealing a little bit from another podcast that was talking talking about this. And I wish I could remember what podcast it was, but they sort of talked about this. The main reason why uh, this sort of stuff was coming out and the main reason my parents were worried about this and why teens were rebelling more, the 50s... Uh, had a massive change, obviously, in music, you know, and, and the oh, way people yep, acted. Yep, yep. We had the introduction of uh, rock and roll, which was really, you know, we we did have some, like, musicians being called rebellious, but mm. no one, you know, Beethoven and uh, Mozart, maybe at most, might have been called a rebellious artist, but his music was still listened to by older and younger generations. Mm. His His stuff outside of music was seen as garish and and immature and a bad influence on the people but his interactions with it, music and the way he moved and played was generally seen as you know a presentable and polite way of playing you know and then jazz musicians um with the exception of general racism and and segregation uh you know they uh, you know, we're, we're seen as um, rebellious, really, music through, you know, most of the 40s and stuff. People listened to jazz and things like that. And mm. the only really rebellious thing about it was kind of, uh, you know, the people that 
weren't racist and were listening mm. to black artists around then or letting black artists mm. play um, because some black artists would play, but you know, white artists would just try and avoid looking at them or they'd have to have a white band leader or something like that. Um, you have some people like Duke Ellington and stuff who managed to get through. But uh, when we got into the fifties, you know, we saw a couple black artists like little Richard and stuff get through and some of that racism might have steeped through into why these people thought it was rebellious. But then, you know, you obviously have Elvis, who was um, adding some sexuality into the music that was kind of already there with, with Little Richard. But people mostly credited it to Elvis because Elvis was a white person. And that was getting more older people's attention than, than Little Richard. Because black people just generally got ignored if they didn't think musically or anything like that, um, you know, from earlier times into the 50s and so with this new music coming out and um with new views you know movies like rebel without a cause and things like that sort of being made we were seeing like a larger um well not obviously me and you because we weren't born around this time but there was obviously like it was the first real era of uh rebels and people rebelling so you know with this era starting and continuing and then you've got you know, music in the 60s that's, uh, you know, all about, um, you know, taking, some of it was about taking drugs and love and all that sort of thing and different views and, and uh, having different thoughts and, and being anti-war. You know, people were being more liberal at that time. So Christians, you know, not just Christians, but just people in America in general needed, because even, even people who, not Christians, but other religions have also blamed you know, and had sort of satanic panic phases in their, um, you know, things like people like that. Um, so even, even, you know, so we saw in the sixties and seventies, there was that panic coming through because this music, you know, it's loud, it's different. It's, it's not what we know it to be. And, you know, the fifties had started this era of kids that were just so different from what they used to be because children in the forties and before that, really repressed even more so than the 50s and 60s 50s and 60s mm. i think were when people were finally expressing themselves a little bit more especially when we get into the 70s and the 80s people were really being expressive about their their sexuality and things like that yeah you know there's a bit, li bit, little bit more freedom a little bit more liberty when it comes to yeah yeah expressing expressing yourself where everything yeah. everything was previously more conservative um over which kind of um, was a way for them to try and yeah. overexert control, and, but and so to relate this back to the pentagram, the pentagram uh, or the the pentacle, the symbol, when they when this um, as I said, it had already been established in quite an ancient text of you know written by an ex priest that this was a you know bad symbol in reverse. The uh, a group of people who you know were a bit more extreme on their views of hating Christianity, Satanists who some divisions of their religion are uh, were, you know, burning lambs and doing things like that. Some people, I think, were just using that cause as an excuse to do their crimes. Mm. But generally, Satanists are, most of the time, while they are associated with some serial killers and things like that, most of the time, they're just, I, I like to think of them the trolls of the Catholic, you know, <laughs> history, because they just basically, they just don't like Christians and they're like pissing them off a lot. So they took that symbol and that symbol became synonymous as being a bad symbol because of them, because of um, what, you know, they, they established by being in the media with that symbol and showing that symbol, um, which is interesting because, as I said, if it's, if it's the other way around, if it's facing upwards, it's actually a good symbol and it's just the elements and things mm -hmm. like that. So, and, yeah, that's, um, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's the history on the uh, pentagram and the pentacle. The yeah. long one. Yeah. Um, obviously, we do see that symbol come up quite often in, in the show. In the show, yes. Especially around the murders of yep. the four people, I think it is. Yep. I'm not sure if um, the priest... Was it Father Klaus in episode two that was... He was. Yes. So they investigate his murder in episode two. Mm. And what they find is the murder weapon could have possibly been the uh, Virgin Mary statue because it Wait, cries I thought the, in episode two. No, hang two. on. Hang on. Uh, that was... um. The Virgin Statue Mary it does was cry for the, at the first victim. End of episode one for the first victim. Yes, right. But that they was... didn't. They didn't realize this till episode two when they, yes. they when they had a. So at the end the of statue. episode two, who was the guy who was murdered? 
Oh, um, that was a rat. That was another priest I don't remember. Yeah, um, that's but, the one. But Father Klaus was murdered in episode one. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. they find out that uh, the Virgin Mary statue, which cries, I think, at the end of episode one. Yeah. They ver- think that what happened was the Virgin Mary statue was used as the main weapon. The person then went to clean the statue. In, it uh, amazes River. me. They've managed to not only knock over what could be potentially a <laughs> six foot tall statue made of marble or stone. One of those two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Without it breaking or having any sort of imperfection, drag it to a fountain, clean it up, drag it back, <laughs> lift it back up, and put it there. Yeah. Well, I can tell this already has the makings of a miracle. <laughs> miracle, because this guy has managed... Whoever murdered Father Klaus uh, f- pulled off the most amazing thing I've ever seen. Mm, mm. And the priests aren't even questioning that. Yeah. Like, they're not... The, the question I didn't see come up was, okay... Let's think about this. How did this guy knock over a statue, uh, you know, a six foot tall statue made of stone or marble mm-hmm. onto another human mm-hmm. being without it breaking, then drag the guy away, put him on a pentagram, come back, drag the statue to a fountain, clean <laughs> it, drag it back, well, put it on My there. theory is that there's another person working with him. And I think that that is... Yeah. I, I so I'm briefly gonna go on episode three, and we're not gonna actually spoil too much of episode three because one. And before we can, and before we do, continue, Eric hasn't seen it, but le- Eric's got some stuff on episode. Two there is just one thing, about. one last thing I want to te- ask about that. Okay, so with the science of condensation and heat, mm. which I really liked, um, <laughs> how on earth is it that in that amount of time there was enough heat created from the statue to make it cry like that? I yeah. I is that even possible? I don't get it either. It I don't. I don't feel like it's anime is possible. logic, Eric. Anime logic. But <laughs> for all the for all the work they did trying to keep the architecture and the um, idea of faith in the in a more Western based Christian society, their basic science is a bit skewed, and even I think there's some bull, mm. bullshit involved. So okay, but anyway, let's continue on to yeah. something a little bit. One yeah. thing we didn't actually touch on, um, so they did, I, I'm going to do give you guys a bit more of a term and one, other, one final sort of term and explanation for something. So I've mentioned the archangels before. Uh, Anna mentions that she was visited by the archangel, um, let me see. What Gabriel. Was Gabriel. Was it Gabriel? No, it was Gabriel. Yes, it was Gabriel. Okay, yeah, cool. Yes, one of the Belmonts also in Castlevania. <laughs> Fun fact. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, uh, Gabriel uh, visits her and tells her that she's you know going to have the child of uh, from God. And um, yeah, I've got some facts on Gabriel. So in Daniel eighteen fifteen twenty six, the archangel appears in such other ancient Jewish writings as the Book of Enoch. Alongside other um, angels, archangels, Michael, Gabriel, and also, I believe, uh, they've got Israel here, but I always thought it was Azrael, and he's the um, angel of, well, he's believed to be the angel of death. And that kind of took me down a rabbit hole that I'm, uh, because I have a bit of a morbid curiosity Mm -hmm. and that sort of stuff, so. Mm -hmm. And there's some really uh, interesting and creepy artwork of um, Azrael with the scythe and the wings and stuff uh, that... Kind of reminds me of the artwork that I've seen from Paradise Lost, where uh, it Satan is, is. It was a. It was a. Um, it was a. It was the general picture used, and it is something that's still being used today. Yeah. Kind of depict what death might look like. It's a real. Um, it's a well-known commonality, and I think, as far as I remember, it but, was thought up. We're, we're going, it was, it we're was, going um, too far down a rabbit hole. Of, true, uh, but real uh, quick, it was an idea I hmm. believe was thought up by the church as well. Yeah. So if anyone well, wants to, you've got to, yeah. there are some darker sides, obviously, to to Christianity, like in terms of some of their stories. Satan does exist in some of their stories, and mm. it's just sometimes called by different names. Yeah. And if you want to read more text about him, like uh, Paradise Lost, where he's presented as more of a sympathetic character, then you know mm-hmm. you have texts like that. He's in Dante's Inferno, but he's more sort of a beast figure in that. 
and his um his inclusion in Dante's Inferno was quite brief as well. Yeah. I remember reading it, yeah. and unfortunately, after I believe the first few levels, I never heard of death again. Yeah. In the yeah. book, so yeah. it was um. Oh no, I was talking about Satan, not not death. He's um, but he is in Dante's Inferno, but he's yeah, he is there, but he's more of a beast like figure than than a Paradise Lost, where he's more like what we think of of a typical angel. Um, but he's got horns and he's, you know, he's, he's still a good looking guy, but he's a, he's a, you know, he's, mm -hmm. he's a fallen angel. Um, but I wanted to, yeah, we'll talk about Gabriel here who, um, Gabriel, uh, he, he is basically the, I've almost lost my place here. He is basically, he's the angel that, um, defends the people against, uh, other angels is what I've got here. Of other nations, Gabriel is, is, as I said, part of a group of seven um, angels, and each angel, kind of like the saints, um, does kind of a different thing. But uh, yeah, so that that was episode two, and that's that's some sort of notes on that's my last sort of uh, term and history lesson, I guess, on <laughs> on Bible stuff for you guys. Um, yeah, uh, so we'll we'll get into episode three now. Now episode three, I'm going to try not to spoil too much because Eric hasn't seen it. Uh, but, knock yourself out. But I, um, um, yeah, another person is murdered. <laughs> Yay! And episode three is the episode which said, uh, "Wait, we were a pro-Christian show. We were a show that's talking about Christianity and <laughs> presenting the Christians as like superhero good guys, investigating like kind of a horror movie like crime. Oh, we were dear. making like you know the Exorcist type thing." No, um, because there's an exorcism, and you think like, oh, this is like the exorcist. They're going to be like, you know, the cool hero dudes. They're coming in to save the day. No, in this show, um, instead, they are presented as like uh, Klaus, we find out, basically was, you know, molesting um, mm -hmm. one of the boys there. And uh, my interpretation of the scene is that, um, and the way they sort of explained it, the way I got it was I interpreted as the boy was not having a um he was having a reaction to drugs not a mm. reaction to an exorcism because what happened was father klaus was giving him either morphine or cocaine it's basically it was white powder so it could have been either if you if you um basically if you crush it down it can it can you know it could be any kind of white powder um cocaine or, or morphine they both can kind of look kind of white and so he he basically was getting hooked on this this substance and yeah father class was giving him that in favor of sexual favors and apparently maybe another priest and some other people knew about this and so uh in this episode they're investigating that and it's touched on um they sort of learned some things that maybe uh that these priests and the german priests in this church might have been connected with the nazis which is a popular theory that has been in a lot of anime, including Helsing and mm -hmm. a bunch of other things. And it is an actual, I looked it up, it's an actual thing that may have, may, may or may have not happened where um, the Red Cross and uh, the Vatican may have helped some Nazis escape uh, Nazi Germany. I believe that. Yeah. I believe that. There's a lot of money involved in, you know, these this kinds of operations. And... As um, Connor would like to turn around and look at my book collection, there is a book called OPJB. Mm -hmm. So this is a book based on an on a real oper secret operation that attempted to find a massive stash of Nazi gold for um, Britain to take back with them. Mm -hmm. So it is not far fetched to think that the Vatican and Red Cross would ever attempt an operation where they can gain the benefits of. Uh, gold or you know any other valuables in order to help war criminals escape yeah. so i can believe i can believe that i can believe that it actually happened and i can also believe that the vatican and the red cross would have enough resources mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. conduct an operation to take these guys to south america yeah. Yeah, yeah. also known as the most popular place <laughs> these guys would escape to next to america itself yeah the because South America theory is not is not brought up in this the show. It's just said that they escaped mm -hmm. to help them escape. But we all know where they escaped to. That that's a Helsing. Is that is that though something that you've seen in other books, not just Helsing? Yeah, not books, but the it South is, America theory that they've you know relocated them to South America. Not exactly. Or is but, that just what you've seen in Helsing? 
it's mostly in housing that I've seen, but yeah. it is just as an equally popular idea in the Marvel Universe, where uh, okay. obviously uh, where with Captain Hydra. America, with Captain America: Winter Soldier, we do see the infiltration of Hydra, aka the Nazi Party, yeah, yeah. into America, and essentially the government, um, the secret organizations, the Shield itself is technically Hydra. Um, it's not a far-fetched idea, since a lot of uh, a lot of things we have today, and the thing, you know, some of the inventions we have today, are basically Nazi inventions. Because next well, to because could, next to I could tell you all about audio equipment and how the Nazis actually revolutionized mm-hmm. a lot of audio yeah, exactly. cars as well. There's, yeah. and uh, how America actually stole a lot of um, Nazi equipment, and that's how we've got a lot of good audio equipment. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. a lot of our um, speakers and things. Yeah, like yeah, that. that's a lot of that's a that's a lot of what people. Don't German ever... engineering is good, even if it comes yeah, yeah. from a terrible place. Yeah, that's one. That's one thing people never even realize is that some is that um, regardless of understanding how terrible Nazis were, there are people who, um, so there are some people who never followed the Nazi ideal and only f- used it as a way to invent or understand or create some of these great inventions, you know, mm-hmm. which is why um, countries like America, Britain, uh, all valued uh, Nazi engine, you know, Nazi or even German yeah. engineers yeah. and scientists because they were the bosses of mm-hmm. invention mm-hmm. and ideas. Mm-hmm. It was crazy. Yeah. Okay. But we're getting too much into Nazi history and maybe we'll do a pod. It, we'll find something with, with that. So it's Eric too, can, can it's too fun. It. It's too fun. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I will find something uh, mm-hmm. that Eric can go off about that with. But let's let's uh, wrap this baby up with a, with a pros and cons and a final thought. So mm. what are your pros and cons on the show, Eric? Let's start with our pros. Pros, I will agree with you. It's got a good um, theme to Christianity to it. They've done quite a lot, a lot of things good, well. They've done a lot of research. Yeah, they've like. done a lot of research. The details in it are quite um, uh, fantastic as well. The one thing I really liked is the stained windows on the church. Yeah, I wanted to ask about that. So do you know what they're talking about with the martyrs? Because I, I don't know what... what these the... are these are saints that have died. Um, I and never saw that you... in any Catholic church I've ever been into. I think... I think I know at least one or two of those martyrs are real, but I'm not okay. sure about the rest. Um, I'm pretty sure Saint Andrew was real, um, yeah. but I'm not sure his method. Of well, death I went was. to Saint Anthony's, and I don't mm. know about that martyr. That well, in if we if we if you try go to uh, the list of saints that have existed and died as martyrs, you get a pretty long list. Yeah. Um, obviously, Christi- Christians were persecuted in a lot of places mm. that they went to. Um, so for there to be a lot of martyrs, even maybe some of the ones we've never heard about, is yeah. a possibility. Yeah, yeah. But the stained glass windows uh, depicting the martyrs, I thought yeah. was a great detail. Yeah. Um, another another pro, I guess I want to include is just how um, I guess how this series shows uh, Christians more liberal liberal view on technology. Um, mm. The fact that the two priests used. You know, not just computers, but also science to try and research. What um, era did you think this show was set in? Just out of this curiosity. looks like the nineties era. Yeah, I was thinking nineties as well. Like mostly modern, because the but computer, not too modern. mostly because the computer itself is looking and setting up like an old nineties. Ah, okay, I see. So I see. this is my basis on when on the period that it could be. Um, obviously, you know, we're not going to dissuade the fact that um science the scientific methods they used didn't exist they did exist yeah um mm-hmm. and i really like the fact that um this is a church that was okay with it you know oh you have a chemical that could show us uh, where blood stains were excellent mm-hmm. oh you have a way of determining whether whether um a person's uh, saliva is their saliva or if their blood is their blood yeah awesome yeah. do it you know yeah. There's um there's a real liberal view to something that yeah. you know stereotypically and, Christians would think is blasphemy. <laughs> and what did you think of that? You, we've so you you like the the character designs, um, more or less. Yeah, uh, I thought I thought they looked fine. They look fine. They look pretty, pretty okay. shown y but you know yeah. whatever. Yeah. What, oh, what, yeah. I think that's the what, thing. What did you think of the music? Like, did you like the opening? Oh, um, that was okay with the opening. What I really Didn't get liked. You pumped. I huh? thought I thought I liked that the opening's not like a chill, quiet thing like the ending because I I do think you need 
And Wait, I'm what's it about you. the opening or the ending? The, the the ending's like that quiet sort of yeah. like typical. Oh, okay, the opening was pretty good. Yeah, um, because I think you do need an opening that's like bouncy and gets you yeah. going because the show is a little bit slow. Yeah, but the one thing, but the one thing they do pretty well with the music inside is they include a lot of um church choirs yeah. and a lot of yeah. these actual classical sort of, music. Exactly, well. I thought it was great yep. and it did rather well. The, Unlike the first mm. um, 18 episodes of what, Rose Versailles. Jesus Christ, you break that up on every, every <laughs> podcast. I will include it if uh, I have to. So, so yeah, like, the music is, is generally pretty good. I got Castlevania, um, the anime vibes from this, because it's got like music sort of like that. Mm. But a Ghost Hunt vibes as well kind of had that vibe to it. Um, so there's stuff I like in here. Uh, and yeah, I think the background art is, is beautiful. Like some of the scenery shots and stuff. Mm. They clearly didn't have a low budget. Um, and the show is generally like pretty fast paced. Like it's, it's slow paced, like starting out mm. in, the, in the first episode, especially. I think and that's why I think you yeah. need that like boomy opening to get you like sort of into yeah. it. Yeah. Because like if it was a quiet kind of somber opening and then you got into it, then it's kind of like, oh, okay. Yeah. But but it, it like once it picks up, it picks up and it you know gets going. Um, yeah, it does. Um, although I guess I should include my cons as well. Yeah, let's so let's get into our cons. I'll now. do my minor cons. Um, one of my minor cons is the strange CGI. That's what I was just gonna bring up. There's, yeah, there's some strange CGI. There in is. I think the biggest one has to be the Virgin Mary statue. Yeah, yeah. Which is like, which is just kind of zooms in on it, <laughs> and I'm kind of looking at it, going, "Huh? What? Yeah, yeah. What is this?" Yeah. It's like, where did this CGI come from? This is so weird. Yeah. Um, there's a few other CGI um, involvements as well, but they're not as big as the Virgin Mary statue one. Yeah. Um, this is just, yeah, this is one of my cons because it's just so out of place with the yeah. whole thing. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like um, them CGIing the zoom in for the stained <laughs> glass. I would have loved it if they didn't do that because yeah. the stained glass image was still great. Yeah. And adding CGI to it would just be overkill. Yeah. Yeah. Um and my at, at least no one turned to CG when they had to do like an action or something. Mm. Like imagine like you see the murder and then you see like someone smashing someone with a virgin mm. CGI, you know. Yeah. And my second big con is kind of going back to my first point in that I still think this seems to be less of a um yeah, this seems this seems to this seems to be more of a of a pair of guys trying to figure out is there a miracle or is there no miracle? Yeah. The inclusion, I feel like I'm throwing in the inclusion of murders, uh, Nazis, and all this other stuff is kind of just... I think it's just trying to unravel, like, and, and maybe maybe episode four <sighs> is, like, something really gets interesting. But my problem, yeah, my problem is, like, I think the characters aren't really that interesting. I don't know if you'd agree with me on that. Like, there, there's not much to them. They're really kind isn't. of they kind of feel like archetypes, like almost. Um, and mm. I can't exactly describe like what type. Like I don't know. You could almost say like because it almost it almost feels like there's you know that undertone of BL sort of stuff in there, mm. um, where you've got like the younger guy who's like kind of Shotokanish, and then you've got like the older dude. Like it did have that sort of vibe a couple times, like a black butler sort of thing. It was weird. Um, the younger dude, thankfully, isn't too young, so it's not like super creepy, but <laughs> he is a little bit young. Um, and there is kind of like an older, younger thing going on there. But like, I don't know. I, I felt like the characters were interesting to watch sometimes, but not interesting as characters themselves. And it was the actions around them and the actions that were happening that were more interesting. Like, mm. none of the side characters that are introduced are really that interesting, like some of them. Like, their looks are sometimes interesting, but their personalities and stuff are just kind of like one or two character traits. <laughs> like, it's not a character study. It's it's more of a, is, like... There isn't a lot you, to you're say You're watching about... it for, like, the mystery. It's 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 kind of like a murder mystery wrapped yeah. around Christian. It, um... The the thing the thing is which there's is no, my kind of con the, like, yeah con. there's a bit of a there's no clear path to what's going on the characters yeah. aren't interesting enough to talk about which are two things that I think are already putting me off from yeah. watching the series yeah. as a whole so final thoughts would you watch more of this probably not would you at least watch the third episode probably not 
So I think this is why I've kind of um Yeah, I dropped this show and yeah. then I couldn't remember why and then I rewatched it and I was like, oh, it was it's kind it's, of bland in some ways. Like it's 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 some... confused. It's confusing to decide what is it. Is it a Christian show or is it a murder mystery? Like is yeah. it a Agatha Christie thing? Or is, is it, it like a historical a... narrative on how the Nazis are involved with uh <laughs> the Christian society? I... Or is it about I think you, you need to get an episode free just to see where that like i don't think i want to continue on this feels okay. it almost feels like a waste of time for me after that yeah so i'm going to i'm just going to avoid this it's not a show i'll continue I, i'm watching. gonna say i'll give it one more episode just to see i i'm honestly just a little curious to see like if they do anything different with it or if anything else happens yeah but it's, it's kind of one of those shows that's just there and yeah. like I'm I'm not surprised it got ignored and didn't get talked about mm. because there's not much to it. There just isn't much to it. Yeah. So I I'm gonna also say like I wouldn't hugely recommend this, but I'll watch. I'll give it one more episode just to see if yeah. anything else changes. But for everybody else who's not Connor, do not watch this. <laughs> it is terrible. No, it's kidding. not completely. Ter- it isn't completely terrible. It it's kind of com- bland. Let's yeah. just say that it's it's kind of in the middle. It is a kind of in the middle. The inclusion of Christian themes. It's very pretty. That's all we can say. The inclusion of Christian themes and the murder mysteries involved here. Yeah. And the, uh, you know, the idea of uh, the Vatican having, you know, an actual team that investigates miracles. Get get, get some, you know, you know, have a look at some of the art background artwork. And download the OSTs, and you've got the best parts of the show. <laughs> oh dear, that is it's, sad know, but true. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's kind of yeah. like, um, you know, Elfin leads a terrible show, but the music's good. <laughs> yeah, I like, oh, I like. Yeah, Lead. I don't like Elf, but Elfin lead like terrible looking. Great music though, like you, you want that soundtrack, mm. you know. Um, but that's that's our review for uh, Vatican. Vatican Miracle Examiner. Yes, that's it. All right, so uh, let's get into the manga review. So we're going to get into the manga review. Eric, I'm going to let you mostly... Wait, is it recording? Yes, it's recording. Okay, good. So, All right. So I'm going to say that again. Uh, we are now going to get into the manga review. So Eric, why don't you tell us about Chainsaw Man? Chainsaw Man is the most epic thing I have managed to come across while reading this. Whatever Connor says is a con about it is <laughs> lies and fallacy. Did you just so, say con and Connor in the same sentence? Something like that. On yes. Purpose? Yes. On purpose. <laughs> um, so oh, just a just to right. kind of just to get, kind of give a quick background. Chainsaw Man is what I came across while looking for a manga to read. Yeah. So I had managed to basically catch up to Promised Neverland, right? All right. Um, so while waiting for new right, chapters so. to come out, I thought, okay, let's go have a look and see what's going on. And so Chainsaw Man came up as one of the latest updates on whatever manga site I was on at the time. Mm-hmm. And I thought, oh, this looks pretty interesting. It's, um, of course, a picture, cover picture was of a guy with a cute little dog with a chainsaw blade coming out of his head, which I thought already was interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then reading through it, I was like, yes! <laughs> because Chainsaw Man can be described as uh, heavy metal brought to life. Okay. In a way, okay. it's not literally it's not literally a heavy metal song brought to life because there's not a lot of unlike JoJo's Bizarre Adventures, there's not a lot of mention in uh, song titles or even artists themselves. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're not going to have something like ACDC or Black Sabbath or Metallica or you know I can keep listing on and mm-hmm. on, but mm-hmm. obviously we're not going to have characters mm-hmm. like that. Instead, what we have is our main character named Denji, who is well apparently. A, you know, a really sad has a really sad life, and he's just a kid. Mm. Uh, essentially, essentially, he was um, he he was a he was a little kid who's had to witness his own dad committing suicide, and was left with a massive debt from his own father yeah. for, to pay for the mafia. Yeah. You know, already a pretty standard story. You'd think, oh, okay, kind of reminded me a bit of Zombie Powder a little bit. Yeah, exactly. So uh, quite a lot of reminder, you know, quite a lot of examples there. Similarities. Now, yeah. here's the thing, though. Where the similarities like that end is the kid being really 
I guess, aloof about his situation, mm. where mm. everyone else would take this a bit more seriously. He's just going with the flow because you well, realize he's a way to cope with it. He's got a he's got a pal. He's got a pit, yeah. He's got a he's got chainsaw. a he's got a devil. He's got a devil dog, mm. um, which he calls uh, Pucci. Or Pucci. Pocho? Or something like that. Oh, I already yeah. forgot I, I like about to call it. him Pucci because then I can figure that uh, mm-hmm. failed Simpsons mm-hmm. <laughs> and Scratchy character. Yeah. Pocho oh, no, no. Right here on. we go. Pochita. Sorry ah, about okay. that. Pochita. So Pochita. Um, so Pochita is a, do- is a dog that's also a devil. And this is... He is a little uh, chainsaw devil. Ah. So every time... So every time... Um, Denji revs him up, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Uh, po- Pochita becomes a living chainsaw. Yeah. Which is already really cool. So basically imagine having a corgi that yeah. once you rub its belly, it has a chainsaw yeah, popping out of its yeah. mouth, yeah. which you then can use to slice everyone now, else. I- I'm going to say this now because I haven't read much of this, and Eric, I think, has read a lot of this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's very passionate, obviously. Mm-hmm. I want to make this, um, because I enjoyed this and I want to read more of this, uh, I'm going to make this a spoiler-free manga review so that means eric uh you're allowed to talk about some of this but we're gonna we're gonna edit out some other stuff that's no problem a bit more spoiler heavy so no problem um yeah. obviously obviously as we continue on we've we find out that denji um essentially uh gets involved with an organization known as the public safety devil hunt police public safety devil, devil Hunter hunters group group yeah. yeah so this is an organization created to take care of uh s- devils who you know stray devils around the world which mm-hmm. are causing mm-hmm. trouble um and obviously we are introduced more into this world and understanding how it's done you know mm-hmm. which is awesome mm-hmm. because this is a world where devils exist you know these are individual beings you can make contracts with mm-hmm. you know do you like um uh demon contract demon contractors in series like supernatural um, but unlike that series, this one you are allowed benefits, you know, massive benefits. And in the case of Pochita and Denji, um, he can, you know, use uh, the chainsaw dog, which mm-hmm, is epic. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, you have other characters and other devils coming across, and each one of them have different abilities and different prices to pay for it. You know, some people um, uh, have to. Some of, the, some, of the, some of these, um, you know, co- you know, benefits to cost is almost the same, you know, described in a similar sense as Darker Than Black, you mm-hmm. know, where we have... They've the, got a payment sort of thing. They've yeah, got pretty much. Their pal. Essentially. Now, the payments for these are extreme. In one case, the payment is the loss of a limb, mm-hmm. essentially mm-hmm. disappearing. And another one is... Uh, your life, your lifespan shortened by a massive amount. Okay, mm. and I'm not talking a few months. I'm talking years, decades. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the price to pay is for some of these cases is massive, mm. and essentially the um, I think I think this is a the series seems to be very heavy on how much of a price is actually paid when you make a contract with the devil, you know? Mm-hmm. It's nothing too little and something that, you know, some shonen mangas would, uh, you know, make as little as yeah. possible to carry on. No, there are massive prices yeah. to pay, and each of these characters um, has realized these kinds of massive prices to pay. And you get to see how much they try and hold back those mm-hmm. urges to, you know, mm-hmm. get the... Um, get the mm. power get their power out to its extreme mm. while also trying to manage to pay the power mm. so essentially so essentially it goes it goes that Denji meets up with another character named Makima so Makima is is the um to be honest uh antagonist protagonist uh <laughs> ally enemy that's really confusing uh yeah. Makima is not a character you know who you know who um uh, whose motives are well known. You yeah. know, uh, she is, um, even up to where I have read, her motives are still in the in the shadows, mm-hmm. you know, but she's, um, she is a rather dodgy character in the way that she knows, she does a lot of good, but at the same time, there are characters around her who have some idea of what she's doing and working against her, yeah. even if they're her allies. And, and her, some of her, her motives behind what she's doing might be for bad intentions. It mostly could be for her own benefits. Yeah. Um, she does have, you know, she is a, a human contract with the devil. We don't know exactly which one. We don't know what it does. We there are there is an event that happens that gives us some idea, but mm-hmm. it, you know, it could be anything else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another couple of characters, um, Aki Hayakawa, 
the um, Sasuke of the series, mm -hmm. you know, a bit of an emo, um, someone who's uh, gone through another tragic event, mm -hmm. who's, um, you know, doing all he can to try and uh, find a way, find a way to take revenge on some person who killed his family, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah, great. Mm -hmm. Hello, Sasuke, how are you doing? <laughs> uh, why are you in this series? Uh, you want to go back to Naruto? No, you're bored, you hate that, because of Boruto? I think great. we do have those type of characters a lot yeah. in anime. There's a lot of those characters, so even, the, even then, Aki Hayakawa, he, he's still an interesting character. Yeah. Um, so there is some interest in him that, you know, would make you think mm. maybe he's not like Sasuke, mm. you know? So let's and, get, oh, sorry, you've got one more. And then of course, one more character, just one more character. Yeah. Uh, also known as Power. Um, Power is a character who's, uh, best friends with Denji mm. and has about the same amount of brain cells as Denji. <laughs> one thing to also mention that Denji is a bit of a yeah, dumbass. Yeah, he's a bit of an idiot. Yeah. So Power is, um, a different type of devil contractor. So mm. in the case of, I guess, Makima, Denji, and Aki, mm. they are holders of, holders of devil contracts, but they're not, mm. um, how do I put this? They are not... Uh, they're not um, integrated with their devil. Mm. You know, they don't become a part of the devil. Yeah. This is what power is. Yeah. Power is a human who has integrated herself with a, a devil she was contracted with. So they are called blood fiends. So I think that's the I think that's the idea yeah. behind it. Yeah. The idea behind it is that they've been they've overused their power so much that they have become you know a devil, almost like a devil themselves. And obviously, she's best friends with um, Denji, and they just go around doing yeah. all this sort of silly shit that they can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and a fun character, even though yeah. she is as dumb as hell. <laughs> um, but the, so far, the series is just wow. Yeah. And yeah, I'm glad that Connor at least has some pros about it to keep reading it. Because <sighs> the other thing about this series is that it doesn't hold back on is the goriness yeah. this is part of the reason why i want to review it and have a look at it this is a very gory anime its style and the way it's done mm -hmm. almost reminded me of a much dumber version of dante from devil may cry oh, okay yeah okay. So this is what i enjoyed and obviously re remembering that yeah devil like may i cry. saw that with like some of the weapons and yeah the yeah, yeah. System and, stuff. and also remembering that devil yeah. may cry is an anime so, now yeah it, let, um, let's get into our pros and cons that's a yeah good, we good should segue so I I did not read enough of this, honestly. Um, I've read like the first couple chapters, keep but reading. I need to keep reading, as Eric keep says. Um, but I I wanted I thought I'd let Eric talk a bit more about this one because um, he picked it. So I just read a little bit of it. Mm. Um, but after having read it, it's definitely intrigued me. The premise is. It started, at first I was a little bit wary of it, because it's like, I've kind of been down here before. Yeah, But these, then there yeah, were some interesting twists and turns, and the character designs are really cool. Um, yeah, I think the art, like, at first, I was a little iffy on it, but then when they introduced, like, some more of the weapons and some of the other things, I was like, oh, no, this is this is pretty cool. Um, good, good, like, design work on the action and how they framed it and things like that. Um, so I, I've, yeah generally liked a lot of this um and i want to you know give it more of a go yeah and, and the, um yeah the two points i guess the two points i would put people off is the beginning the introduction to I, the character I, I and how it's it be a bit repetitive at times it does become a bit a repetitive bit if there's um if there's an idea introduced into it that with that you know a repetition with a new idea yeah. that could be interesting enough to keep yeah. it going for a few chapters um in this case i think it's done quite well i, I do worry that it's going to turn into a bit of a Shodan power trip thing like let some me other let me where let it's me hunting hunt a monster of a week and then you know get a power up kind of thing let me let me just give you let me just give you something for that uh no it doesn't okay it's oh, good to hear there is a you know as i've um as i've mentioned before there's a lot of prices to pay with some of these characters having to contract with the devils you know yeah. there are characters who know how this works and so the price for them to pay is far less mm -hmm. than usual mm -hmm. but there are characters such as denji himself who starts to realize what a yeah. massive you yeah, know yeah, how yeah. much power yeah. how much uh, uh, he has to pay yeah so don't worry the shonen elements are very low mm -hmm. in the series so. so what are your uh final thoughts would you recommend this yes keep reading this? absolutely <laughs> So, this is probably yeah this is a definite recommend from eric and i am going to keep reading this and 
um, I will see if this will be a definite recommend for me mm-hmm. next week when I get back and um, give Eric a bit of a follow up on on this uh, great manga that I've mm-hmm. read. Uh, but yeah, we'll catch you guys uh, next week. This has been alternating with Eric. And hopefully we'll have a live from Armageddon episode for you next time. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, this has been Alternating with Eric, episode 23. Catch you later. Bye.